Hey coders and welcome to episode 2 of our App Engine playlist on the Google Cloud Platform course. In this episode we're going to be covering the App Engine dashboard. Whenever I create an App Engine application in my own personal work, the three resources which I take advantage of most often on the dashboard are current load, billing, and any application errors. So those three are going to be our top three topics for today. And without any further ado, let's jump on over to a live demonstration so that we can get a better understanding of the App Engine dashboard. Here in the Cloud Console dashboard, I just want to take a quick second to point out the fact that our project is growing and you can observe that fact by the amount of data now that has been populating on this dashboard. So as always, you have the project info, for, which for the most part is not going to change. But now you have some new data over here, which is a status update on the Google Cloud platform. It looks like there was an incident with SQL, which affected the region US East 1. And US East 1 is exactly where our project is located. So as an administrator, I would uh, pay a special attention to this incident right here to know that there has been increased latency and possible partial results uh, uh, when listing Cloud SQL instances. All right, also we have some new stuff right here. This is Cloud Resources, which are, we are using. We are just using the App Engine and then also Cloud Storage to, to, um, to store our uh, website files right here. We have some billing right here, APIs, and then also some traces. But the most apparent thing is this App Engine mini dashboard right here. So just from this mini dashboard, you get just a line graph that has the summary of counts per second. For instance, I know that the blue is the requests or the response, uh, the responses per second. And then, uh, so blue is everything underneath a 400 HTTP response. And then red is all of, all of my 400 and above HTTP responses. So I can see that there was three errors. And then with the blues, I can see that there has been a lot of uh, successful responses as well. All right, so this is just the mini dashboard, but if we want to go to the actual real dashboard, we just need to click on this link right here, go to App Engine Dashboard. And once we do that, we have the App Engine Dashboard right here, which is where you'll be spending the majority of your time if you are managing at a high level your App Engine application. So here's the uh, here's just me scrolling through. We have a line graph right here, which was basically our line graph from our mini dashboard on the Cloud Console uh, dashboard on the previous screen. We have billing and we have current load and then also application errors. So if we just look a if we just have a quick look at our current load, we can see requests for these pages are nine, seven, five, and five. All right, just keep that in mind. And then also we have this line graph, which it looks like we haven't made any requests within the past five minutes. All right, so now what I want to do is actually view our website, view our web pages that have been hosted on App Engine. So let's do that. We'll just click on this link right here. This is our URL of the website currently. All right, so if we click on that. It says redirect notice the previous page is sending you here. That's exactly where we want to go. All right, so I made some updates to the code and now here is our new home screen for our application, for our website. It says David Weiss Programming and I also made a second web page to go with our website and it is right here. It's underneath the path of videos. So we just have YouTube, a subscribe button right there and a couple of videos which I published uh, underneath Google Cloud and then also underneath Apps Script. All right, so now that we know what our website looks like, let's go back into our App Engine dashboard. And I'll just refresh that page right now. And uh, so this chart may take a couple minutes to update, but if we scroll now down to current load, which is what we'll be taking a look at first, we can see that now the requests for each of these URIs has been incremented by plus one because we made one request every time we uh, navigated to these pages. So that is how requests look. All right, we also have some other fields underneath current load. We have the the uh, the the URI which was loaded or requested. 
So for right here, this is just our home page HTML. We also have videos HTML. But not only do the HTML get loaded, but also their respective CSS files. So the, re the respective CSS file for the home page uh, is index.css that was loaded, and also videos.css was loaded for videos. So this second field is requests per minute. This is basically if you have a lot of requests happening per minute, this is a good metric to know. But since we don't have a lot per minute, it's just at 0.2 for right now, but this will definitely increase the more requests that you uh, that you send to this application. And then this is requests in the last 24 hours. So if you can imagine you had a very large application, this will be many, many requests in the hundreds of thousands of requests. But since this is again just a small website for right now, we're just getting uh, in, the, in the ones and in the tens of requests. And this is per 24 hours. So runtime machine cycles or M cycles, uh, this is, I don't really pay too much attention to this, but this is how many machine cycles you have in the last hour. And then finally, the one that I pay attention to a lot is average latency. So when I look at current load, I look at what URIs are being loaded, and then how many requests has been made in the past 24 hours or in the past minute, and then what is their average latency. So with looking at these three metrics, I can see uh, what URIs are the most popular, and then what, how, how long does that viewer or that user of this URI have to wait in order for that page to be served to them? So I just look for abnormalities, say right here, this is definitely an abnormality. It says 700 milliseconds is the average latency for this source, this URI right here. And then, uh, and then, uh, then all these other ones are less than 50 or less than 40.5 milliseconds. So that's pretty normal. So if I wanted to look more deeply into why this is 700 while the, some of these other ones are just say 40, I could go back into the code and configure for this URI. All right, so that is current load. Now let's look at billing status. So for billing status, this shows you the resources which are used uh, on your app engine application and if and and if they are being billed, how much is that costing you? So this last column is how much it's costing you. As you can see, right now I'm running a completely free app, and that is because none of my uh, resources are being billed. So we can see some usage right here: uh, 1.26 instance hours or 0.000072 gigabytes. But we can see that none of that is actually being billed. Um, if they were being built, then this would be per unit. Uh, so per instance hours right here, that'd be one per instance hour. And then we could see the, the, the rate at which they are being built. So for this resource in particular, it's only five cents an hour. So that's not that bad. Uh, that's not even that bad. All right, so if you want to do some more research on, on what, re what, what do these resources actually mean? And then the quotas, like how much, how many, uh, usage hours or instance hours do you have before you exceed the free uh, the free quota then you can always hover over this question mark and go to app engine quotas so this is a very long page but I would actually recommend that you read some of it because there's a lot of useful information so for example let's say that you wanted to read more on front end instance hours well you could go into this this documentation right here and I know that it is underneath deployments right here underneath instance hours and I see that instance usage is built up uh, by instance uptime given at a hourly rate but if I read more I can see that there are separate free quotas for F or front end and B for back end instance classes and for the front end instances that we have the free quota of 28 free hours per day. And if we look right here, we can see that we are well underneath that free quota, or well within that free quota, uh, and we have 1.62 instance hours. So this gets reset every 24 hours. The next reset is in 11 hours. So we will have plenty of time uh, for this to reset before it even gets close now to our 28 free hours a day. And if it does ever uh, exceed 28 hours a day and we have set up billing, then it will only be five cents an hour, which isn't even that bad. All right, so that is billing. And now let's take a quick look at our application errors. So application errors 
are very helpful for when you want to know what errors are actually happening and if you have say like a a, a call center and people are, are saying hey I'm getting errors when I go to this website then they will definitely uh, appear right here. So let's intentionally cause an error just to see as an example uh, an application error. So if you remember from our last episode I, I recall that there was a common error that happens when you're first deploying your application, your Node.js application to the app engine and that is not naming your server-side JavaScript file as server.js. So if you named it such as index.js, remember App Engine looks for a server.js, not anything else, just a server.js. And if you don't specify in your package JSON that hey, I'm changing my my server-side file to be named as index.js, if you don't change that in your package.json, then when you go and uh, deploy your new uh, your new website your application using gcloud app deploy then you will definitely get an error so let's see that right now we will deploy this and intentionally cause an error so I'm going to say yes and I'm going to wait for this to deploy so I'll speed this up right now All right so we have just deployed a buggy node.js application to app engine so let's go check that out right now if we go back into our website right here and go to the home page I'm going to delete that and then go to our home page we can see that now we get a server error and that was completely expected but let's go into our dashboard right now so if we refresh this page right here and then scroll all the way to the bottom we can see that we cannot we get application error and it says error cannot find module workspace dot or slash server dot js and that is exactly what we were uh, we were expecting we can see that this server error has or we have we we have encountered server errors uh, three times in the past uh, and that's when I was testing this actually uh, on the URI, URI forward slash and this error in particular has happened four times. So that's pretty cool that we get that real time. If we want to actually investigate this error a little bit more closely, we can follow this link. And this actually leads us to error reporting. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this page just because this service is an entirely different playlist. But just to look around, we can see that uh, we, we can actually see the full error. And it says again, cannot find module uh, workspace slash server server.js, and that was exactly expected. But the cool thing is, is if you if you are working in a project and you're using, say, an issue tracker such as uh, Jira or Monday.com or something like that, you can actually link this issue to that issue tracker's uh, URL, and that way you can uh, sync basically Google Cloud with. Uh, uh, Jira or something like that or just have them uh, 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 linked together so that's pretty cool and another cool thing is that uh, so right now this is marked as open but if you resolve this so say you go back in here and then you say uh, I'm going to now rename this back into server.js because I have discovered the bug and then I'm going to redeploy this uh, using gcloud app deploy then what you can do is now you can say resolved and then so now this is a result underneath 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 resolution status and if you go back now into your app engine and then you may need to refresh once but then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that now there are no application errors in the last 24 hours. And that is just because we resolved that application error. So that is, again, pretty cool. That lets you keep on, on top of all of your bugs and all of your errors in your application. And since we resolved it, now we have no more application errors. All right, so the last thing I want to do before I close out this video is just take a look at this graph right here. So this is the line graph that was basically our mini dashboard. As we can see, we already can uh, we already have a some a new request that has been made while this video was uh, running, and then we can change say the time frame that we'd like to see uh, this line graph in, whether it's a day or the past week or the past hour. 
We can also check the data from different versions of our app that have been deployed. So this version was just made. Let's look at our last version. We can see the total requests. Uh, there's just one request, but this is our current version and it's, getting, it's receiving 100% of the traffic. We can also filter not by summary, but we can do stuff like latency um, and, and error details and maybe traffic. So there's a lot of different uh, metrics that we can filter by. I just normally keep it on a summary uh, just to see how many requests that we are receiving uh, for a, uh, in particular, a different version. And, and then again, yep, we can uh, filter by different time frames. So guys, that is going to be it for our App Engine dashboard video. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.